I told Michael I was surprised y'all was working today, being Good Friday. It's a Good Friday to work. No, I'm just playing. Good Friday to work. That's right. Oh. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, um, I had a customer one time tell me that that he's off every Friday because nobody should work Friday. I'm starting to believe that a lot. <laughs> I'd love Fridays off. It'd be nice to have a three-day work week. The bank would be calling me, going, "Hey." You need to work Fridays. Well, when you own your own business, you only work half days anyway, don't you? Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Half days is 12 hours. Well, it's 24 hours in a day. Okay, yeah, I didn't think about it like that. Yeah, I guess you're right. Half days, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know, they say when you own your own business, you're rich and you ain't got to work at all, right? Uh, I haven't found that. I'm doing it wrong. I am I, too. I when you like, figure it out, let me know. Well, uh, same way. If you figure it out before I do. <laughs> but now, um, we're going to run today just to because we do have shops unfortunately in the automotive world they think you need to work every every day all day christmas new year's you know yeah most places do get off christmas but they're usually there the day before and the day after so that's true if they got a tool broke i want to be able to fix it or if they need one i, I want to be able to get them what they need so they can get the job done that's right. make it a little bit better of a day so well that air hammer kit looks cool got some good looking bits with it yeah uh, i'm really surprised that i have any left um when i first got them at expo i talked about it last week and they went so quick that i ordered more um we've had a lot of people this week though that seems like i guess with uh people starting to travel to go see family and stuff yeah. for sunday our customers have been really, really busy. So they'll come on, they'll look just a second, pay and get off. Mm -hmm. That happens. I understand that. Um, you unfortunately, gotta go, you gotta go. yeah. Unfortunately, when that happens, there's not a whole lot of time to look around, see the great stuff. Um, so I, I think that's the only reason I got any of those left. Which I was a tech. I totally understand that. There were some times that I had to tell my dealer, "Hey, run my card," mm -hmm. you know. And and I totally get that when that happens, but. We did end up selling the 80s cart. It is no longer here. So that was a great uh, thing. I, I didn't think it would last as long as it did either. The blue top, the blue toolbox is supposed to get unloaded today or tomorrow. It's sold, it's been sold for a couple of weeks. So cool. he's finally cool. making room for it. So, Well, what new cool stuff you got? Well, I've been showing the amp clamp this week. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a 600 volt or 600 amp, I'm sorry. I think it's 600 amps, 600 volt, I'm not sure. Um, 300 volt, it says right there. The main reason I've been showing that to everybody is everybody's talking about parasitic draw and stuff like that. Yep. It's so easy when, when you're using an amp clamp. Plus, if you're looking for excessive draw or anything like that, this makes it so much easier than actually having to back probe or any of the, mm -hmm. any of the electric gurus know the process of just getting the voltmeter out, putting it on, and that's another thing, the min and max, you know, how quick is it dropping? Because right. um, when you get uh, AC ripple going on, y'all would have laughed if I'd fail. When you get AC ripple going on, sometimes your voltmeter won't pick that up. Um, that has a min and max too. It may even struggle to pick it up uh, because it's basically a voltmeter in your hand too. But um, at least you haven't went to all the trouble of back probing, running wires, stuff like that. That one I can just clamp it on there, see what the power wire is doing, mm -hmm. see what it's charging at, see if it's dropping. Uh, and if I get a whole lot of AC ripple, it's time to get my scanner out and, and watch it a little bit more closely there. Um, which if we're doing that, we're getting into the, the video, the, not the video, <laughs> the scope, right. um, a silly scope and everything. So talked about a lot of that uh, explained a lot about that I really like when I get to show my customers a tool that they that they would love to have but don't know how to use it when I get to show mm -hmm. them and educate them on it I really like that so we have showed a few people how to use those and and as soon as they get to where they can afford it that's what they're going to be um, they're going to have one so cool I'm trying to think of what else we well, talked about the this. big blue prime bars in I hope soon I know that we talked about it a couple of weeks ago um, that they were doing blue pry bars. Uh, a lot of people commented that they already got theirs. A lot of people commented that they already have theirs ordered. So I know that they're they're coming. We're just yeah. we're just waiting. Um, unfortunately, 
it seems like every time we start shipping a whole bunch of stuff, we run out and then have to start over. So back orders are going down pretty, uh, pretty quickly, but it seems like so much has been ordered. When you, when you have a back order situation for as long as we have, they grow so big that so many people's waiting. Mm -hmm. So it's tough, man. When you get behind, it's ah, hard to catch up. Yeah. Well, but I mean, we still had, we still have a full truck, so we're okay with it. But that's true. We've been talking a lot about the Nipix pliers. They're hanging right beside you. Um, we always, we try to re revolve Nipix pliers in mm -hmm. just about every, uh, about once or twice a month. We try it's to start pushing pliers. To, it's hard not to, because it's the best one they ever make. Well, and the, th and the thing about it is, there's so many pliers out there that frustrate people that when they go to lock down on something yeah. or, and it, it, it pinches their hand or something, it, you go in with a good pair of pliers and that's just happened, they're sold. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't even have to talk. They'll, they'll take them right out of your hand, so. It's it's a good feeling to be able to help somebody like that, but I'm trying to think what else. We talked about the drill bits last week. Uh, talked about the blue pry bars. Yeah. Uh, wow, first, first time in four years that I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> It happens. Uh, I mean, it's pretty good track record, though. One pretty, time in four pretty, years, you know. Pretty good, right? Yep. Well, I mean, and that's the thing. Uh, we've had such a good week. I really hadn't had just a, a real big sales plan. Yeah. Um, normally, I have it to where at the beginning of the week, I have a sales plan, and this is what we're going to talk about, and this is what we're going to do. Um, this week, I really hadn't had to have one. It's just been I'm getting what I need and getting off. Yeah. So. I will, I have showed this a couple of times, so we'll show it. We'll go back to electrical for a little bit. This is another test lot that we got, and everybody's like, oh yeah, we got a million test lots. I like this one for a little, couple of different reasons. This one here, I still have a little short um, needle on the end of it. Right. But also it has a spot for these uh, alligator, clips. alligator clips to screw on or other attachments. You can get the, um, the probes that are because you know test lights are normally real thick there on the end right uh, and that can really mess up a connector when you start mm -hmm. back probing with it so if you're actually using a back probe kit you can actually get some that are screw on, on and now you've got one that you can clip on use it or you can screw your alligator clip on right. um, because a lot of your test leads that's what they um, they have a, not test leads, but jumper kits. They'll have an alligator clip mm -hmm. on. Well, this here will help you there too. So nice. get a good car, uh, good contact and it'll stay there. I don't know how many times uh, with a with a cheap test light that you clip this on the ground and then you go to touch something and this comes off yep. and you get ready to throw it. Yeah. It happens. Um, <laughs> I really wish that with this one, it's just got the, the bulb that lights up. I wish they could get them to where it's like our other ones that's got the digital readout. Yeah, um, yeah. Because the more and more I learned about electrical, the more and more I started hating the regular bulb. The test regular lights. test lights. Yeah. Because it tells me almost nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, it tells you if you got power or ground. That's, that's th it. And that's almost nothing when you're mm -hmm. actually doing an electrical diagnos uh, a diagnosis. Uh, and we actually helped somebody. We talked about showing people tool. We had a t uh, guy that was trying to decide between a regular test light or the higher one that showed voltage, and we was actually able to tell him why and show mm -hmm. him why. Anybody that's diagnosed anything on can high or can low knows that just having voltage means nothing. Yeah. Uh, especially on can high, you're gonna be around five, five volts. Can low, you're gonna be around 2.5. Well, if the bulb lights up dim, mm -hmm. well, it works. No, that's not, we, we need to see why. <laughs> that's exactly right. Um, and some, some of your actual sensors and devices and other output and input uh, uh, deals, they need, some need 12 volts, some yeah. need five. Well, if it's getting 12 volts and needs five, you're cooking it. Like, mm -hmm. that's why it keeps going bad. Uh, or if it needs 12 and it's only getting five, maybe exactly. that's why it's sluggish. Maybe that's why it's not working part of the time. Um, so I want that's why I want either a voltmeter, which is kind of overkill sometimes. Mm -hmm. Why not just have it on the test lot? Yep. We, we have them, we sell them. Can't hardly keep them in stock, so. If I'm checking fuses, yeah, just a yeah, regular bulb. Regular bolt I just want to see this. I actually like the one without the ground wire for fuses. You know the the cordless. Cordless um, one, yeah. We sell a lot those of those. Those are awesome for just fuses, like yeah. You know, well, and and I'll throw this out there. Um, Maco has one in our catalog. 
everybody take a deep breath because I'm gonna go against what I'm supposed to do here. But let me show you the one that Mako has. If I can find it right quick. Y'all done got all your Easter eggs bought and colored and ready to go? No. Have we? No. Okay. Yeah, I'm not I'm normally over that category. Get on the ball. Well, you know, back to that about working and stuff. That's why we just get the plastic ones that's ready to go. Well, that's what my mom did. I know she's got some because she told me she did. Um, but we like to let them die. Theirs too. Okay. So on page 417, this is the cordless tester yep. that Maco sells. I don't like that one. And I'll tell you why I don't like that one. Because if I'm under a dash, yes, I'm listening for mm -hmm. a beep. I know. However, and it's got a little LED light. The one that I like, um, Snap-on does have a version of it. Yeah, the clear, that's the, got clear. the metal clip. What's the one we sell? What's their What's their name on it? You remember? She can look it up right quick. It is a really nice one. We order it. We sell it to our customers. It's clear. It looks just like the Snap-on, but mm -hmm. of course, it, it's not the Snap-on. Um, it makes a, a, a noise as well, but it in vibrates. a shop, yeah, in a shop, if it's loud and I can't hear, well, that's doing me no good. Mm -hmm. And normally, if I'm in the inside checking voltage. I'm on my back looking underneath the dash. Struggling to struggling. get it where you need it anyway. Right? And so at that point, yeah, it looks like ATD is the one that we get. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a ATD 55033. It's a three to 30 volt. Uh, it does the light, it does the vibrate. That's that's the one. I don't, I don't normally go against Maco, but mm -hmm. that one's not. If you're doing heavy diagnosis, that's not the one you want. Yeah, you want I like that one, the one there. Mine's a Snap-on brand, and it it does the lights, it vibrates, and makes the sound. Yep, I like it. That's the one I want. Um, it's fun to show people how that works too, because mm -hmm. they, they sit there, if if they've never done it, they sit there and try to figure out how it's going to work. Um, the best way that I can show them is I touch the door and do the 12 volt cigarette lighter that's over here. Right. Um, but I like that one for fuses. But even still, if I'm checking, if I'm actually going to the back of a motor or if I'm checking at the throttle body or anything like that, I want to be seeing the voltage that it's at. What are we, right. where are we at? So um, keep that in mind. If, if you're using, I know a lot of the classes that Toyota sent me to, um, they, they called the test lights basically, uh, I forget now, EC, ECM take, uh, something i can't remember it basically it was bad to check like ecms and stuff with them because right. um when you go to start checking the ground side of those uh which a normal test light doesn't normally do there is some that will when you give it ground it'll light up mm -hmm. uh green and green for ground, red for yeah, hot. yeah um there is some of the ones that's just lights that do that but how, how cool is it to be able to do that and see that it's that when you've got your power source, you know it's 12 volts, you go to the ground. Well, if it's only showing three volts, maybe maybe my ground's, mm -hmm. maybe the wires here is messed up. Maybe it's painted over because it's been in a collision or something like that. Let's it's see what's- It's always the ground most of the time. Well- Almost always the ground. It is. Uh, I have people call me all the time asking about like trailers, especially, check your ground. Well, and it seems Run like a test it, lead to the ground, check the ground, always check the ground. Yeah. <laughs> it's always the ground. Well, and ground becomes very important when it comes to tail lights and stuff too. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's learned that um, when water gets in tail lights, especially in older model Chevrolets, it messes up and usually it's a ground issue there. Um, Our new model folders, because they have them leaked from the factory. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I saw somebody drill, I was drilling holes in them the other day. Yeah. Uh, and that was the basic reason is they had water in there. But yeah, it, it's good. I, that one test light that we do sell that shows the voltage, it's a really great one. Uh, it also does the ground too. So I like that. It's not only showing me the voltage, it's lighting up green and red. Mm -hmm. So it's quick to know, okay, I got pattern, I got I got battery voltage, I got ground, uh, and what is it? That, I, see it. I mean, if you call into any tech line, uh, which uh, if you're working in a um, home shop or a shop anywhere besides a dealer, tech line is where mm -hmm. 
the dealer actually has people that you can call and they're supposed to be the best of the best and they tell you which direction to go. A lot of times you get a, you do a lot of unnecessary testing because right. they don't listen to you at all. They think they're mm -hmm. Superman and you can tell them that, hey, I've done this, this, and this, and they're gonna try to challenge you from the from the first word, you know, well, go do it again and tell me the voltage and this, that, and another. It's good to have all that at one place. That way you can do it, but yeah. um, between, other than that, I mean, uh, our cordless is starting to trickle in a little bit. So if you've been waiting on the three, uh, the uh, three eighths, 20 volt, they, I've got two of them. I don't know how much the, your dealer may have got or if they got any, because mm -hmm. I have seen where some dealers have just now got their camo impacts and I've done sold mine and can't get no more. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, if your dealer's one of the lucky ones, um, take advantage of it. There you go. All right, guys, well, we're going to get in here and get stuff done so we can cut out a little early today and uh, start our weekend right. Like always, thanks for hanging out with us. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up. Check over for merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes in the description. If you're not subscribed, click that button. Just press it. Y'all have a great weekend. Happy Easter. See ya.